Hello Flux community! In this video, we're going to be covering three things that can fluently go together. First, we're going to be setting up a Docker build and test environment in Windows utilizing an Ubuntu shell. Second, we're going to actually be building a Docker image, a Hello World application to be precise, and then testing it locally. Third, we are going to be pushing this image to Docker Hub and deploying it on Flux OS. So without further ado, let's get started. So the first thing that we're going to want to do is that we're going to want to install Windows Subsystem for Linux. And to do that, we need to open up PowerShell. And specifically, we need to open up as an administrator. And once you're in PowerShell, you're going to want to type in WSL hyphen hyphen install. So let's go ahead and run that. Now it's installing WSL, and also this command installs Ubuntu. This will take about 10 seconds or so, maybe longer if you don't have Ubuntu already downloaded, but it'll auto download anyway. Once that's finished, it's going to prompt us to reboot our computer. So we can actually do that directly from PowerShell or through Start menu but I like doing it through PowerShell. So let's type in restart hyphen computer, and let's go ahead and restart. So after you finish restarting your computer, you're gonna be prompted to create a username. So let's go do that. And a password. And there we go. We now have an Ubuntu shell in Windows. So, of the first thing, let's uh, run a sudo apt update. So that's always good practice on a fresh Ubuntu install. All right, it's fetching updates. And once that's done, we are ready to install Docker Desktop. So to do that, we're going to want to go to the Docker desktop website and download for Windows. Now that we have Docker desktop installed, you're going to want to log in to a Docker Hub username. And what you're going to want to make sure is that this is bottom bar right here is green saying engine running. And if that's not the case, what you're going to want to do is go to settings here go to resources, to WSL integration, and make sure this is checkmarked. All right, now that that's complete, now, that, now we can start building our sample application, a hello world. So let's go start that. So now you're gonna wanna open up your favorite editor. I personally use Atom, just because it's lightweight and easy to use. So I'm going to open up that, and I'm going to need to create a project folder. So let's uh, do that. Let's call it Hello World. Select folder, and there we go. Now the first thing I need to do is let's create an index.html, something that will visibly display my Hello World message. And Adam, it's really easy to create a HTML template. Just type in HTM and you can just press tab and it autofills everything. So down here by body, I'm going to want to create a heading field. And in here, I'm going to type in hello world. And let's add lots of exclamation points just for fun. And then what I want to do is I want to save this into my Hello World folder. So that's the index page. Now let's test that locally. And Docker projects, Hello World. There we go. So this is just running, not in the Docker container, just as a single index.html. 
And that's fine, that's nice, but we need to serve that in a container as a web server. So what we need to do is create a Docker file. So new file, Docker file with no extension. It uses a dot file extension, which is nothing. So just Docker file. Now the first part of this is you're going to want to specify where you want to pull like a base image from. I personally like using Alpine images, but for this, we need a web server base to start with. And I'm going to use NGINX because it simply serves a static web page. And that's good for what we're doing here. So let's type in NGINX. And then let's actually pull up Docker Hub and find a distribution that will suit us. So docker hub nginx, let's go to there. We'll go to tags and I prefer Alpine images just because they are incredibly lightweight and efficient. So this is the one that I probably want to use, just a base Alpine NGINX. So I want to go back to my editor. I want to type in Alpine. So that tells it to install a base NGINX Alpine image on this container. Now from there, I want to copy my index into where it serves its HTML from. But I don't know that exactly. So let's look that up. So let's ngix default HTML directory. And there we go. We found our answer right there. So let's copy that over and paste it here. Notice how I have a dot right here, and that signifies that I want to copy all the contents from this single directory, which is where my index is stored, and I want to place that where, to this HTML directory that it serves from. And that should be sufficient for our simplistic hello world. So let's go and save that. Now that we have our project constructed, we are now ready to move it over to our Ubuntu directories. So to do that, an easy way of getting there is going to search backslash backslash WSL money sign and go to that. And this will bring up your Ubuntu and Docker folders. Alternatively, you can find it right here in your Windows Explorer. If you have Windows 11, it has a nice convenient area. But anyway, let's go to our Ubuntu folder, go to home, my username, and now I need to copy over my hello world folder. Let's copy that, and let's paste it here. All right, now we are ready to actually build this. Before we actually do that, you're going to want to go back to your Docker desktop and go to your resource WSL integration again and check mark on Ubuntu and apply and restart. And there we go, engine is running. All right, now we are ready. So let's search, see what directories are here, see if it's working. And it recognized I have my hello world folder. So what I wanna do is I wanna change directory and go into the folder that has my Docker file in it. So let's go there, and now we are ready to build. So what you wanna do, sudo docker build, let's add a tag to it, and let's call it hello world. Now let's add a dot to say that it's this folder that has my docker file in it, or it wants to search this folder. And let's see if it builds.
And there we go. It has finished building. Let's see if it actually came up and oh, there it is. And let's try running this. Let's give it a local host 80 just so we can just go to our browser and just type in localhost and there we go we successfully have a container serving a web page so let's go and let's delete that and now that we are successful in that we are ready to push this image to docker hub and then deploy it on flux now that we're ready to push the image to Docker Hub, we first need to log in to Docker Hub via terminal. So sudo docker login. Now, if you don't have your credentials already in, you're going to be prompted with a username or password and just fill that in and it should be fine. Now that that is done, we can tag the image. So let's go sudo docker tag. Previously, we call it hello world. So let's do that. And we need to now rename it with a new tag as my docker username slash hello world latest. And that's the repository that I want to use. All right. And let's go back to Docker Desktop, and we can now see that that tag was created. So let's go back to the terminal, and let's push it. So sudo docker push little stash slash hello world. And there we go. It just pushed it. Now let's check to see if it was actually updated and pushed. There we go. Updated a few seconds ago. All right. Now we're ready to spawn this on Flux. Now to deploy on Flux, we're going to want to go to our browser. Go to home.runonflux.io. And I'm going to want to log in and sign this message with my Zelle ID. And I'm now logged in. And let's go to apps, register Flux app. Let's name this Hello World Test. Testing Hello World as the description. Now for this, I want to do little stash slash hello world latest. Oops, I misspelled that. Latest. And the default ports are automatically assigned as open. Domains. I'm going to want an empty set of brackets since I'm not using one. I'm okay with the auto, uh, auto assigned uh, hello world test.app.runonflux.io. Container ports. I'm going to want 80 because. That was my container ports. And to find that, you can just go back here. You can press run. And you can look at your container ports right here. But environment, I don't have anything there. And for this, let's just go temp directory. Because we don't really need it. Let's minimize this all the way down to 1. And... Let's compute a registration mes message. Now we need to sign this message. And this will be 0 0.45 flux for a month. Now let's register that. And let's pay. Let's go economy. And yes. Now we need to wait for a this block to get mined. 
So now that a block or a couple blocks have been mined, my application has started to propagate across the Flux network. And we now have four instances up right now. So let's go uh, test them. Here's that the first IP. And it displays our message. Success on the second. Third. And fourth. Now let's refresh and let's see if any more instances were brought up. Oh, we actually have a fifth, a uh, sixth now. So what Flux does is it ensures that three instances that I specified are up at all times, and it also gives a variance leeway of up to five extra in instances to ensure that it's always up. And it won't dr ever drop below the three that I specified. So now that those are working, let's go test the domain, see if that was auto assigned. So what we want to do is go with our .app .runonflux.io, and there we go. It brought up, and this is load balance between all the nodes. Awesome. Now that you have your feet wet with building in Docker and running an application on Flux, feel free to stop by the Run on Flux Discord, where we have various other templates that you can learn and build from, such as Apache servers, Node.js, or various other production build uh, formats or blueprints. Well, let's build the next decentralized internet right here on Flux for the people, by the people. Thank you.